2023 today in Turkey. As you can see, Turkey coming in, having a lot of fun. They are about to take on Greece. My name is Key Michael. I'm so excited to be your host for today's matchup. Force of August, just checking those last minute Instagrams, making sure that we've got all the tags ready to go for this matchup as Greece come in. Both these two teams arrived just about an hour ago to Castello Dusseldorf here in Germany. Both these teams will be hoping to make it out of pool play for a chance to compete in the finals of this year's Eurovolley. It's going to be held in Belgium September 1st and 3rd live on Eurovolley.tv. <laughs> Uh, Kanzu, today you're facing uh, Greece. What are your expectations ahead of this game? What uh, will be the most important and what do you know about the opponent? I think today there will be a good game between Greece and us because they are playing really good and like there will be some moments that we need to be stronger than them but then I think game will be good for us because we are ready, we did all our tactics and we are prepared for this game and we want to show our best because like the tournament getting better and better for us and we have many important matches uh, in front of us so we want to be ready and we want to play our best game today. Uh, Amna, yesterday you played a long game, today you are facing favorites of this pool, Turkey. Did you manage to recover fully after yesterday's game and what are your expectations for a game against Turkey? Uh, we expect to play, it's a game like the other games, uh, unfortunately we are sad because we, get, we are playing against the, the first and it's a hard game. But uh, right now our country is burning on fire, so the best thing that we can do is just to give our best self uh, for our country and uh, for our team and for, for uh, our uh, tries. in the world. A lot of things happening, but all we can do is focus on the volleyball match. These two teams, well, they've met 10 times in international competition. It was Turkey to come out on top eight times to two. The last four wings as well belong to Turkey in three friendly international games and the 2019 European champs. The last time Greece had a win over Turkey was in the summer of 2015 during the European Golden League. Now, just a few moments ago, the captains, Ede Erdem Gündar of Turkey and Olga Sarantali of Greece, they met for the coin toss to determine who will serve first. Well, Greece taking on Turkey here in this part of Pool C, which also includes Germany, Azerbaijan, Czech Republic, and Sweden. There are 24 teams in this competition. And over these couple of weeks, 78 matches have been and will continue to be played throughout Belgium, Italy, Estonia, and Germany. The next round of competition will begin on August 26th. Here's what's coming up again later on today. Ukraine and Slovenia, Hungary, and Serbia. But there's lots more volleyball coming your way. Here are the pool standings as they sit. Turkey right there on top. They've only played three matches, whereas the five teams Four teams below them have played four matches. So nevertheless, they are the, still the number one in the pool. It's been a full summer for Turkey already. They've been competing in the VNL, traveling over the span of six weeks to host Antalya, Turkey, Hong Kong, China, and in the Bangkok, Thailand, facing the best teams in the world. Turkey have finished third in the standings out of 16 total teams, losing only to the USA, but then going on to finish as champions in the finals held in Dallas, Texas, USA. Turkey have carried that success over to this tournament. Three wins already under their belt. A couple of players we're going to want to keep an eye on. One of them, Zera Gunesh. She plays in back in bank, the 24-year-old middle blocker. Was the best middle blocker of the club world champs in 2022. Look out for some fantastic net play out of her. Hande Baladin, the number seven, 25-year-old outside hitter who plays in Zajibashi. She has been fantastic for her team as well. Look out for some look, going off hand. She likes to be really tricky at the net. For Greece, well, Georgia Lampruzzi, the middle blocker. She 
he plays in Olympiacos in Greece. He's the MVP of the Greek Cup in 2016, won the French League in 2021, and Ana Maria Spanou, 27 year old. He plays in Wilsburg, Germany. Also had a little bit of a group beach career there up until 2019, until she came over to indoor full time. Turkey, there's a look at that lineup. A couple of players you'll recognize. Rosa Vargas, one of them, the opposite, who's been a fantastic addition to the Turkish squad. Since joining the nationality just shortly recently. Greece, well, they are in for a difficult road ahead. They haven't had a great start so far. They already lost three of their four matches to Germany, Czech Republic, and Azerbaijan. They only beat Sweden 3-1. This is the last pool play match for Greece. They need a win here to have any chance of making it out. Turkey, while well, they beat Sweden, Azerbaijan only dropped one set so far to the Czech Republic. Still undefeated, top of the pool. Looking good to advance to the round of 16 with a win here today. Last time we saw Greece on court, they had a slim five set loss to Azerbaijan. The top scorer in that match was opposite Marta Antuli, who put up 29 points, including one ace and two blocks as Greece enter the stadium. Georgia Lampruzzi, who we met, and Lamprini Constantinidou, they had each had three blocks of the team's 12, but that defensive network was made easier by some top serving. Five aces as a team, put a lot of pressure on their opponents. Wasn't enough to get the win, but they're gonna need it against this Turkish squad today. Turkey. They had a 3-1 win recently over Czech, in which the top scorer was opposite Ebra Karakur. 24 points for her, including two blocks and two aces. The team overall had eight aces and eight blocks, and they're looking for a top performance again here today. They are in really good form, making their 11th consecutive appearance at the European Championships, 16th in total. Greece taking on Turkey, but first and foremost, the national anthems. There you go. National anthems. Getting both teams fired up and ready to compete for their national teams. Turkey, they've finished on the podium five times in this competition as the coaches give a little handshake to each other. Turkey finished second in 2003 and 2019 and third 
2011, 2017, and 2021. So a rich history in this competition already. Turkey is one of two teams, including Serbia, to reach the semifinals in each of the last four European championships. That is quite a hefty background. Greece just making their seventh appearance here at the European Championships. They won only four of their 35 matches in the European Championships. Coming into this championship. There are the referees for today's matchup. Flash Marken of Slovenia. Peter Zabo of Hungary. They will be presiding over the festivities. Just making sure everything goes according to plan. All the rules are followed. All the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. And we are just about ready to meet the starting lineups wherever you are. Hope you're comfortable. Grab some snacks. Grab yourself some drinks. This should be a fun matchup. First off, we're going to meet the players of Greece. Starting out strong, Mansa, Marta Antuli, the 19-year-old opposite. She's been hugely important with her big arm. Huge weapon for Greece. Azamina Nicolo Gianni, 24-year-old outside hitter number five. Number seven, Giorgio Lampruzzi through the middle blocking spot. Anna Alan Caste. The middle blocker in the opposite from Lampruzzi. Lamprini Constantinidou will be setting Olga Stranzali in the outside hitting spot. There is the lineup. Coach Yunus Ochal, he's new since 2023. Previously was the assistant coach, is also the head coach in Athens when he won the Greek Cup in 2023. A lot of experience at the helm here for Greece, but he is Turkish. So it's going to be an interesting situation as he goes up against his home country. And they are starting strong with Melissa Vargas in the opposite, the 23-year-old. Ande Baladin, number seven, the 25-year-old outside hitter. Elif Sahin, 22-year-old setter. Switching things up. Number 14, Ede Erdem Dunda, the experienced middle blocker at 36 years old. Number 19, Asli Kalach, 27-year-old middle blocker who plays in Fenerbahce. Ebrar Karakut will round out the squad, the 23-year-old opposites. And Simga Akros will be in the libero jersey. There's a confirmation of that lineup. Daniele Santarelli at the helm. He was the previous coach of Serbia when we were, won the world champs in 2022. Coach is also at Conegliano in Italy since 2018. Has had a lot of success with every team that he touches over the last few years. So I have no doubt already having won the VNL with Turkey. There are much bigger things ahead. Well, the fans are ready. I'm ready. The players are ready. So I hope you're ready at home as we get underway. We'll see. History yet to be written. So if you want to hold on to the top spot. The whistle has blown. Let's see how it goes. Greece on the right here in Pool C. Taking on Turkey on the left in the red. And the first action is a big block out of Greece. That's a great start for that side. Marta and Tuli up at the net, taking up a lot of space. Well, Turkey, as we mentioned, coming in with a lot of success so far. They've had Nothing but wins on the board in this competition so far, only dropping one set. Ada Erdem Dunda looking for the honey pot and she finds it. It's a couple players on their knees. 
Ada Erdem, one of the most experienced players on the court at 36 years old. As we mentioned in the last match, Turkey had eight aces against their opponent, Czech Republic. So look for them to be serving tough from the beginning. Greece is going to have to do the same thing. They need to get Turkey out of their offensive rhythm. Well, that'll help. Mata Antuli, best opposite of the Greek League in 2023, gets a nice high ball inside. And look at the change up there. She knows she's got to do something other than swing into that big block. She's got big hands in front of her in Karakurt. So looks down the line instead. 3-1 start for Greece. There comes Vargas. We've talked a lot about her over the last few months. Not only was a fantastic contributor to the win in the VNL, but have a look at the height she's getting. There's the speed at 98 kilometers an hour, but she's going basically OT the block. Servers just getting into rhythm. Expect at this high level. There's going to be some errors. Both these teams trying to put pressure on the other team from the service line. That doesn't happen with lollipop serves. So with that risk comes a lot of reward, but also error. Down the line. Three still scrambling to keep things in play. But ultimately, a free ball does not go past the net. Trying to keep things up. That's unlucky for Greece. An opportunity there as Turkey were out of system, didn't put their strongest attack forward. They had two errors so far in the serve from Turkey. Let's see what Katakord has for us. Much better that time. Puts Greece on the back foot, but a good tip in. Gives another response for Turkey off the hands. Free ball again coming this time on Turkey's side. Well handled. And a quick rip. Well, the Turkish fans are out in numbers here in Dusseldorf. You can see the flags all over the place. This is one of the best teams in the world in terms of international volleyball, so no doubt. The fans are here for it. It's well left. It's a good attempt there to get past the big hands. Turkey coming back with some fire. Now 5-4 having shut down that lead that Greece had early days. Now they're shutting down some attacks through the middle with a monster block. Baladin, just one little step, doesn't have to do much. She's prepared, her hands are high, it's just a little half jump. That's all it takes to get in front of the attacker on the other side. This time to the outside, the tip's good for Greece. Hello, Gianni on the outside. It's a great set as well. Getting a one on one, beating the blockers. So that tip can fall. He's staying within one, five to six. Deep serve. Does it land on the line? Yes, it does. A serve for Greece. Defenders watching, hoping that ball to be out, but a beautiful serve there by Kalantaste. The middle blocker, she goes again. And a defense to follow it up. And Greece through Antuli on the outside. Are back in the driver's seat, seven to six. 
And from the floor is Constantinidou. Alain Patze. Again, one ace already. Goes for that same spot. But Turkiye not even phased. Send a high, wide ball back to Vargas, and there's what she can do. Almost three meters height attacking. And an ace serve this time for Turkiye. A little pop on it from Azle Kalac. Goes again. Same spot. High ball behind and it's down. And Tuli, she's going to be crucial for this Greek side in terms of point scoring. We're going to look to find her early and often. And there's an uncharacteristic hole in the block there normally and they have been really good at closing up to her outside hitter a lot of power and the baladin a name we've started to know well over the last few years on the international scene she's looking for the late close out of lampruzzi who's trying her best to get out there but all that is is a tiny little bit of space between the two blockers and Baladin's able to find it. Vargas goes for the top spin. Well, there haven't been a lot of service errors on Greece's side so far. In fact, it's been Turkey with the majority of the risk taking at the service line. You can't fault Greece for that. Attempting to put some pressure on Turkey because they're kind of coming like a tsunami of offense at the moment. Off the hands. Ball to the outside, Karakurt goes cross. She's dug, but the ball handling error, unfortunate after a big pickup in the backcourt. Hello, Johnny stepping in. Baladin. behind again and Tuli she's dug joust at the net kept on Greece's side there's the throw Vargas is underneath it another chance on the outside Katakur with two hands still underneath it is Vargas but the team has not enough time to run it down so Greece are staying in this match early days Maria Spanu, who's one of our players to watch, the 27-year-old outside hitter. And that's a good attempt to try and find the line. Again, we know Greece has to be aggressive from the line. They have to look for creative ways to force Turkey out of their rhythm, out of their system. They're within one. Another couple errors. But you'd rather, as a coach, see that long serve. You never want to see a ball go directly in the net. You want at least the team to have a chance to play it. That one earlier, Greece got the service ace on the end line.
Over pass for Turkey. Ball behind to Vargas, cross court, and what an angle. Vargas, one of the best in the game at finding something out of nothing. But the high wide set, beautifully done by her setter, and she can just add so much spice to it. Reese down by three. There's the block, but it's slow enough to recycle. Quick through the middle. Ball to the outside. Here comes Katakur. She's dug. And it goes just wide of Vargas' feet. So the crowd continues to enjoy themselves. connection there better for defense. When she see front of Marta, because we talk all the day about what we did about block, we have to set up defense here better, okay? Six more left, six more right side, five alone here to all kinds of situation. No need to go deep, okay? We try to do autocavera all the situation. So for here, I want to see some defense situation. She will start out, last moment, depend on the situation, she will play inside. Stay straight, no need to search. Have it. Coach Ochal doing his best to describe what he thinks Melissa Vargas is going to do on the other side. She already has three winning spikes and points for her team. Often likes to go cross court, but the trouble with that is if you leave her too much line, she will absolutely take it. One of you going up against one of the best players in the world. You could do your best, do whatever you want, but like these fans know, Vargas and Turkia are a dominant opponent to go up against. John Sally goes down the line, targeting. Katakurt, ball comes back through the middle to the outside. Kept alive. Here comes Vargas again. And the same thing over and over. Same day. Different day, same story. He's going for the line this time, and that's exactly what we just talked about is as soon as you decide you're going to take cross on her, she will see it. She will go down the opposite direction. She is using her smarts and her vision. So yeah, keeping things alive, 16 to 12. Baladin forced really wide on the set. A good pick up there by Katakurt, but have a look at how far outside the antenna that set is. So still three points in it. They fall in by Akos. Deep swing from Baladin, much better. Well, looks like it went just long. question is, was there a touch on the block? That's what this challenge system is here for. Meanwhile, it's a chance for the players and the coaches to recap. Oh, I don't think I see a touch. I'm not sure which side challenged, whether it was Greece or Turkey, but no touch given. So Greece take the point. Paladin targeted Vargas, tip down the middle, great pickup. Greece to respond off the hands. That's still alive in the back. Vargas again, hotter, heavier, and with some authority to the cross court. He's a wide open channel between the two blockers. Doesn't have to go line, doesn't have to go cross. Just 
tries her luck through the middle. Ball behind to Antuli for Greece. A couple of players on the floor, but a little slow to do it. And Antuli, the best score of the BVA qualification, senior 17 in 2020. Tries her luck against a one on one. That's the middle blocker on the floor. Antuli finds Echoes. Ball comes back. Quickly does it. Well, I think we might have another challenge coming. For ball in out. I thought, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw the Greek players say, no, that ball was in. Let's have a look. Yeah. In and how. Challenge unsuccessful is what that should have said as Greece was the one to challenge. That did land in, so Turkey will continue on a roll. And now it's a timeout call. I want to stop this. <laughs> now she has to uh, get angry to me, let's see. But the point is now, what I told. Okay, we have to go more smart, or she has to pass, let's say, or we have to go on the situation. And is not so stable on pass. After we try to set up our block and defense better, guys. Well, the benefit of having a Turkish coach on the Greece side is he'll know these players inside and out. And he's saying, Handa Baladin, target her, please, in the reception. She's a little unstable in that zone. She has a two time club world championship, but everyone has their weaknesses and that's exactly what the coach of Greece is looking for just those small chinks in the armor it's 16 to 18 Banu well picked up staying in play there's the push to Vargas quick ball through to Ede Erdem There's a beautiful reaction there on that tip. And almost a one-on-one, -on -one. the two players diving into the spot, but I think that ball went straight in the net. And then um, giving a freebie back to Greece. Another tip, doesn't fall yet, good joust. Stays on Turkey's side. Vargas deep to Antuli, she keeps it in play. Back outside for the lefty on the outside, Stransali, who's been relatively quiet in the offense. The 27-year-old outside hitter has a fair amount of experience on her side. She's played in Alba Blas, Romania, Poland, Italy, France, and the University of Miami in Florida. Go Canes. Coming over to Athens next season. So the importance in the offense for Greece. They need to keep her firing. Meanwhile, Vargas continues firing on her side. Vargas now with five points. Have a look at how much space you see from that angle perfectly. She's in the air, and she has a one blocker in front of her, but she makes it look like no blocker. She has the angles that she can pretty much use the entire net. throw sent right back in the same way I like it and there's a look at some of the players who are typically starters Yansu Ojbe setter and Sera Gunesh normally starting faces in the lineup but it's nice to see some of Turkey's substitutions getting some play 
Turkey, one of those teams that has so much depth on their bench that even the players that don't get to see the court that often are the, at the highest level of volleyball. Some of the stats. Greece has four errors so far, most of them in the serve. Same thing for Turkey. They have nine. They've been giving up a lot of points, but even so, despite the errors, nine of Greece's points right now have been given for free by Turkey. So only 10 points they've earned. Aichak. Typically wearing the libero jersey for Vakit Bank. Goes in for the serve. Let's see. Does the libero get an ace for Turkey? That's the question. Falling out. Oh, just out. This band still going strong. Vargas, though, into a net. So an unforced error brings up 21 21 and a timeout necessary. Hey, you see the block that uh, is not uh, ready or arriving late. It's not been that you need to close the shot. Eh? Also for the power tip, because I saw some solution that you search. All these solution are very soft. Push the ball with the, with the arm extended this way in the center of the court. The ball is perfect, attack strong and high. The ball is not good, or you play hands and out, or you put the ball in the center of the court. There's some pretty classic Daniele Santarelli advice. I don't want to see you make silly errors. If you don't have an opportunity to swing, Look for something other than that hard driven ball. You've got tips, you've got rolls, you've got ball on the setter, you've got get the opposite on the floor. You've, you've just got options when you're up at the net. If you don't find yourself with an attackable ball, try to recycle the ball and trust in your defense and go again. Vargas. Well, she doesn't take the tipping rolling advice, but she does take the find a way to score advice. That's how it's done. Runs around to the back again. Finds the block a little disheveled on Greece's side. And there's only one player up to try and slow her down. Tough serve. Blockers ready. Great pickup. Ball stays alive. Antuli has to send a freebie. Ball to the outside. Catacourt is dug. Antuli again with the tip, and there's the tip that has been working over and over. That's the advice. Antuli listening in to Coach Santarelli, maybe, from the other side of the court. You see a well-formed block, or you don't know how to get through it. And the cheeky tip. 22 points apiece. Crunch time now. Vargas delivers again. Vargas with a much quicker set that time, and you saw how she had to kind of make a leap around the setter in order to get in a hitting position. Often finds herself creating space, finding any way she can to get open for her setter as one of the go-to attackers on this red jersey side. Vargas now has eight kills and three errors. Catacourt, we haven't seen her at her best yet this match. Only two kills. Three. Keeping things close. 
for Logiani, who had an ace lost. Timer out, excuse me, that was Kalan Kate in the serve. And the boom response from Turkey. That brings up set point. Three so close to stealing a set from Turkey. Will they allow it? Or will they shut it down right here? Ball to the pipe. Greece, stay alive. Ball targeting the corner and the pipe that again, we haven't seen a whole lot of it, but Stavan Sally just popping up out of, out of nowhere. Vargas, she's dug. Ball stays in play on Tuli. Can't get it to cross the net. And that one might come back to haunt her. So there's another challenge. Here's the question. Did that ball potentially hit the forearms of the blockers? We know it didn't go through the net. But nine times out of ten, when there's a block up and four touches are called or just net is called, there might be, if the blockers are doing what they're supposed to do, which is kind of straight over the net, chances are there might be a little touch there. And we'll get a chance to see it as we've got a challenge in process. No matter which way it goes, this also might be a chance just to slow down the momentum of Turkey. So Greece need a reset. Oh, you know what? Well, it's called unsuccessful, but that's very close if you ask me right on Ada Erdem's left arm. But point stays with Turkey. 25-24. Can they close it out here? Or will Greece hold on for another set? Point. No, they won't. It's an acer. Vargas. 100 kilometers an hour. She sends that ball flying across the net. And with that a serve. The first set is done. He's looking straight down the middle at Stransali. And there's spin and there's firepower. And there's an ace. Fukie takes set number one. So that's how it was done. 26-24 Greece. Showing up to play. Okay, that was not an easy set for them. They did give, give up a fair few errors, as we'll see in the stats here. 13 errors Turkey gave up to Greece, so pretty much half of the scoreline. They followed that up with 19 kills, sorry, 16 kills to nine, two blocks to one, two aces to one, and Greece only gave up six errors. So that's a stat that they can be proud of. They did hold their own in certain areas. But Turkey, again, winning the VNL recently. Always contenders for one of the best teams in the world, at least in the last few years. Especially now with the introduction of Vargas on the team. Radford as well. So the light show begins. I was in Turkey for one of the VNL matches or, or final. Hold on. Or yeah, last year I think it was. I have to say, the light show spectacle is something you cannot imagine until you're there in person. Well, here's a look at the contact point for Turkey's spikers. Majority of the balls going to the right side. No surprise there. That's where Vargas likes to do most of her attacking. And they also do purposely keep her on that right side. They don't do what most teams do where they'll spread 
there's one rotation where the opposite hits on the outside. So if he doesn't do that, they try and get her to the right side as much as possible. And here's the angles, mostly that she's been hitting those winners. As a reminder of the scoreline, 26-24. Greece wasn't able to pull it out, but they can take away a lot of good things from that last set. They were picking up a lot of tips, defending, and making it really tough for Turkey to score. There's a look at some of the stats of the opposites. Vargas with one ace, two errors, and just a couple more kills than Antuli, but both those players crucial for their teams, respectively. It's always the case that the opposite attackers take up a lot of scoring power. And in fact, interestingly enough, Adekurt, typically an opposite as well, and she's playing in, in that outside hitting role for her team at the moment. They're just wanting to make sure they get both those players on court, and it pays off, because then you've got a nice big block. 197 centimeters of her. Kalakurt, her last name means wolf. Black wolf, as you can see from her tattoo on her neck. There's the tip throw. Turkey stays in it. High ball to Kalakurt on the outside, and that'll feel good. The opposite turned outside hitter finds some sharp angles to get her team underway. Gets inside the block of Kalantatse. High ball has to be rolled. And on Sally. Gets the ball right back from Vargas and the ball is up, defended. That's got to be infuriating if you're the libero of Greece. Maria Asakianu does a great job to put the ball up and playable. And two players let it drop. Terrible frontal, it's coming every time. This girl goes with flying, you see. Sometimes can create shorter half please in this condition. Sometimes she can create shorter half please in this condition. And every time she's ready, you have to repeat because they are ready to move. One forward, one set, them, one back. We are not repeating until now. So repeating is a good idea. We have to clarify and we have to give better condition for our spikes. Come on. Turkey start, starting strong here in the second set. 3-0 lead already. High ball behind for Antuli into a big block. And again, it's Katakurt, who's the protagonist on the left side. Antuli diving in. She sees four big hands ahead of her. She might have wanted to go line there, but perhaps didn't have enough width from the set. And that's something the coach was talking about too, putting the setters, or the setter, putting the hitters in better positions to score. Ball goes back over, Katakort again. Well, I love this for Katakort. She's not in her comfortable position. She's being used in a way that she's not typically used to being used. But she's finding a way to contribute to her team nonetheless. And that's what all the coach can ask out of any player. And 
Tuli taking a rest. Lefty from Stransali on the outside. He's the best scorer of the Mediterranean Games in 2022. Finds a way to go sharp down the line. Just catches Vargas on the shoulder. Constantinidou, 26-year-old setter. Setter in the Israeli Cup 2021. Doesn't do enough in the serve because it's Turkiye coming back with some heat. Great ball in from Baladin and look at the push. Just making some space between the setter and the blocker. Quick behind, off hands. Great response out of Greece. We haven't seen a whole lot of middle action. It's Kalantate to get involved there. She won the Greek Cup two times. Plays in Athens. 26-year-old middle blocker is going to be necessary. I think Greece need to use their middle more often. Keep Turkey honest. Same thing. Turkey sending it through the center. Great dig in the backcourt. Kept out of the net. A recycle play. Patacourt gets another shot at it. And she'll do it over and down. Clever action there by Catacourt. The first time she had a chance to swing, she didn't like the set, rolls it into the hands. Her team can recycle. Then she gets a better shot at it. A bigger bite at the pie. And it's seven to two. Good dig in the backcourt. Vargas into the hands. The block is good, well placed. Four Greek hands slowing down Vargas. Possibly for the first time in the match that she's been blocked. Heads back to serve after that block. Finds Baladin. That's a good target, as the coach suggested. And that's often one of the strategies targeting the outside hitter. So she then has trouble to attack. So she does get a good ball in. But then having a shortened attack zone means she's got to try and do something different with it. Little 7-4 lead. Vargas off the hands. And a run down, but it can't come back in play. Vargas adding way too much heat on that. Perfect ball in from Akoj. Sophia has a wealth of libero strength as well between Akoj and Gizem. Baladin, that's what she likes the best. And for Bal Baladin, well, she's known for a few different things. She likes her tips and rolls, but if you get her fired up, she's one of those players, all the Turkish players, you can probably say this about. She's going to play with a lot more heat after you've seen maybe an error or she's been targeted. She's coming back with way more aggression. There's a huge block from the captain. Eda Erdem Lundar, look at the arms. She is in rhythm to close exactly where she is and she's one of the best in the game to do it. 10-4 lead. Reese is out of system and Tuli has to tip. Can't find the court. So Greece calls a timeout at 11 to 4. Uh, general, they are opening like this. If you can tip more shorter, it's better. 
They are like this in back row also. When you are back, back row attack, also they are like this. Nobody goes inside. For sure they are reading and going inside, but let's think like that. Uh, you know where you have to serve. Try to give better quality and we have to try with middle small. Okay, Amen. tidbit of information on where to tip. Of course, coach Yunus Ochal, who knows these players so well, he's Turkish himself. So he's saying they're not in place to take a short tip. They might read it and come in. He knows the quality of the players he's playing against, but let's just try, see if it works. And in addition, add a little bit more middle in the mix. I don't think the plan was to set Vargas on the other side. Constantinidou from the floor, having to bump set, trying to get it to the outside. Vargas says, thank you very much, I'll have a piece of that. Nicolò Gianni into the mix for Spanu. Nicolò Gianni's sister, Basiliki also plays volleyball, might be watching on from home. There's the pipe. Kukia out of system, but it's a high ball to Vargas. Does she deliver? Yes, but she's dug. Cross court dig. Excuse me, cross court attack from the outside. From Ojani, who's just entered the game. Fresh legs, fresh confidence. Goes down the line against Vargas, looking for that little bit of space between her and the antenna. Maladin tight to the net, through the middle to Ede Erdem. And truly finds the end line. Yes or no, says the referee. She does not. Ball's coming a little inside. Looks like we got a challenge coming. Marta Antuli. They take a big rip to the end line there. It's a smart play for her not to swing down. She doesn't find it. And Tuli's only played, Greek, played volleyball in Greece professionally, but she's headed over to Chieti in Italy next season. She's proven herself one of the better players in the, in the game, especially on this Greek league, this Greek team. So she's stepping up to the big leagues next season in Italy. Vargas goes with 106 kilometers. Well, a bit of luck for Greece just to get out of the way there. Thirteen to six. Nicolajani, 24-year-old outside hitter. Big block, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Konstantinoudou. Malekti goes straight up and down, taking away any line possibilities. That's a little bit of a tight set for Baladin. But the pressure on the block, perfection. 7-13. Tip and another error out of Baladin. A few in a row for the outside hitter. She's been struggling now to try and make something out of these sets. Nicolò Gianni. Well, just to give you an idea of the service speed, 87 kilometers an hour, that's pretty average in the 80s for most of these serves and that'll put into perspective Vargas is 106 kilometer an hour serve 14 to 8 rather than she's targeting Artekianu block is good over in two out of court is kept alive but the error back 
to the Turkish side. Love that aggression out of Katakort. She sees it, gets up early and responds. And the Baladin, two-time Club World Championship winner with the serve and forces another error. Well, Greece was within striking distance on the first set. Turkey is stepping up their game here in the second. And one of the major differences, Turkey have cut down on their errors. Only two errors here in the second set as opposed to 13 that they had in the first. Bob set. Hand set, excuse me, but to the middle. And the setter taking things into her own hands. There it is, Alif Sahin, CEV Cup winner in 2022, plays in his Zajibashi. Clever serve, ball goes just wide. And things keep ticking over for Turkey. And the Baladin. Two-time Turkish Super Cup winner, two-time CEV Cup winner, still at the line for Turkey. And another change comes in on the Greek side. And in the back up. Outside hitter plays in Chamavier, France. In to try and stabilize a little bit of reception. High ball. Has to be a freebie. Turkey to handle it. Yes. Simge. And Eda Erdem Dundar fed up with some butter on the slide. She's up. She's early. That's one of her go-to attacks. She is has been and continues to be one of the best in the world to get offensively going. 36 years old. I feel that Turkey uses her sparingly now as one of the veterans on the game. She's played in Fenerbahce since 2008, but when they do use her, still as good as it ever was. Good serve from Tontai. Well, it didn't look that aggressive of a serve, but sometimes just changing things up, not necessarily going full power, just doing something to make a different player play the ball, get her on the floor. Of course, Katakort, surprisingly, and the Baladin continues to be the target. I think if I were serving, I'd put it right on Katakort, but I'm not the coach. Down the line. Just wide from the captain, Erdem Dundar. She's typically been the best middle blocker of the Turkish League. She was in 2006, was again in 2022. That's the level of playing she has been at for how many years? Over a decade, almost two decades that she's been at the top level. Give her the line, she'll take it. High ball. Here comes Katakurt. She'll tip it right into the honey pot. Katakurt, another one of those players. She's still young, only 23 years old. We saw her in Novara last season, headed over to Russia for the next. She's been growing steadily year by year, adding some tips and rolls to her repertoire. 
And some big stuff blocks continue on the Turkish side. Karakurt teaming up with Kalac. Asli Kalac, the 27-year-old middle blocker, getting the chunk of that one. Panagiotta, Zantopoulou, 23-year-old setter. Serving at 12 to 22, and she aces the libero. How about that? Simge, the 32-year-old libero who's played in Izajabashi since 2016, typically one of the best liberos in the world. Best receiver of the Turkish League in 2021. If you're ever gonna get an ace, that one will feel the best. Does she get another? No. Gets a free ball though, that's just as good. And the response is emphatic on the outside. Bit of help from the net there, that almost finds the ground. But there on the outside, Elena Baca. It's a bit of heat. Another tough serve. Finds Turkey out of rhythm. They go heavy off the hands. And Tuli does the same. She's dug. Here comes Katakurt one more time. There's the tip. It worked last time, not this time. Here she go again. Stronger. And that's what has changed about Katakurt. Those tipping on the first one when she doesn't feel like she's in a good place. Gets two bodies on the floor, free ball opportunity, and then she can go even harder and more aggressive. That's a clever play out of the youngster. Well, the air is starting to creep back in for Turkey. Now with Four errors in this set. A couple of them coming at the end line on the serve. Top serve again. Horsim gets a handle, but she does much better that time. There's some conversation as well to see whose ball that might have been. Vargas, as you can see, just keeping her body out of the way there. That's what I'm talking about, that Vargas does not play on the outside. They push her over to the right side, even when it's difficult, even when she's got to cross the entire court in reception to do it. All in or out. Not much of a doubt there. With that, Katakurt back at the line. Set point, Turkey, 24 to 15. And another serve in the net. Turkey has missed a few serves so far. Still set point. Chance for Baladin on the outside, goes into the block and finds the floor. So Turkey can celebrate a second set win over Greece. Let's look at that final play. They were really targeting Baladin to the left side, making her, forcing her to play that ball. But she does so beautifully, gets the response from her setter. Two zero, 26-24 and 25-16. Greece was right there in that first set. You can see the coach, Daniele Santarelli, ready to chat. We serve a little bit better. 
We did so many mistakes in the first set. Uh, it's a really strange match until now. We did so many mistakes uh, in both sides. Eh? Not a good match for sure. I hope that now we can do something more. I know that we are trying to push more on serve because our serve is always important for us. And today, so and so, and for this we suffer a lot. So we, are, we need to improve for sure on serve. And then uh, maybe we are doing a not an incredible job also in attack, but everything starts from the serve. What I saw, the second set, I mean, it was a clear one, but the service was not really strong, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But didn't, we didn't push so much more. Eh? We found continuity, but you know, serve is really, really strange because uh, it's uh, something that happened in the mentality of the girls and of the team. When arrive one mistake, then arrive another mistake, then it's difficult because uh, I would like to push more, but I cannot because uh, we are doing a lot of mistakes. So I hope better. <laughs> we will check. Good <laughs> Thank luck. You. Thank Thanks, you. Daniela. Coach Santarelli there. Couldn't have been clearer with his words. Better serve is what we need out of our players. Just better play as well. Let's have a listen in to Coach Ochal. That was really, really close in the second one. Even the service of the Turkish girl weren't so good, but it was a two-world game. Yeah, uh, first, when we start, we were not thinking so much about uh, we will play against them really, really high level. But, but then we realized that we can play and we play one hard, high level sets. Then when we lost, of course, we lost our confidence too. As always, we are young and it affects so much this type of stuff. And we are playing one team, which is uh, all star. So even one point they do a little bit high and we are losing our confidence too. We try to keep this confidence again and we have to show our best again like first set. We will check. Thank you. Fingers crossed Thank for you. third. Well, there's a look at some of the stats. A little bit better in the arrows for Turkey. Only seven as compared to the first set when they had 13 errors. Big blocking set as well with four but 16 attacks to five Greece just were not able to get their offense going there in the second set they had much more success with that in the first again both the coaches referencing that a lot of it having to do with the errors but as soon as Greece got a little bit of confidence they realized yes we can actually play here's one of the main problems for Greece at the moment here's the setter contact point only five percent of the reception balls are going in that green zone that is not enough to play at this level 77 percent in that outer circle so not too far off the mark but have a look at turkey it just dialed in to the green zone there, basically making it so easy for their setter to run her off and she can use middle she can go quicker she can add width to the ball she can really be playful in her offense and that makes it so difficult on Greece's blockers. And that's why we talked about their blocking. It was a little bit disheveled there in those last couple of sets. And that's the main reason. Well, I'm still a little bit in shock at that, those stats that we just saw, the visual representation of the passing structure of both of these two teams. Greece haven't been able to get that ball to their setter. And the reason I was so shocked, I want to say, when we saw those couple of aces, or one ace and some errors out of the libero, Shinga Akos, is because classically, typically, she is one of the best in the game. And in fact, all the passers of Turkey and you saw exactly that visual representation. They're just putting that ball exactly where they need it. With some dance moves is Evrar Karakut. She's racked up nine points, a huge improvement from the first set where she had just two. A couple of errors, not much 
happening from the serve, but she was hugely influential there on the outside hitting position. And again, not her typical zone. She is an opposite player by trade and by tradition. So to find herself in the outside hitting spot, that's, that's classic skill of this Turkish side, that they can take any of their players, put them anywhere on the court, and they're probably going to have success. Third set underway as the babies are enjoying themselves in the stadium. And an ace serve for Greece. First one comes high and hard. Now, interestingly enough, I haven't seen Greece targeting Katakort in the reception, and I have to question this. I know that the coach, Yunus Ochal, said target Handa Baladin, but I'd be targeting Katakort all day. Well, she shows that. Get her once, but you can't get her again. And another fast set back to Erdem. Baladin down the line. Quick through to the middle. Greece need more of that. We heard Coach Ocal, Ocal, excuse me, asking for more middle to be involved. In early days is the time to do it, especially in set number three. They haven't used it a lot. Great change up, great angle on a one-on-one. -on -one. Nicolò Gianni. There's that dialed in reception again. And that means the setter, Elif Sahin, can find Vargas in the pipe. Barely has to take a step. She's going to get a one-on-one -on -one because all the blockers have to be focused on their respective hitters. And Vargas with so much angle on her. Antuli, clever. Antuli won the Greek League last season. She's two meters and two. So she's going up there against Katakurt. She's just a little bit shorter at 197. Greece in the lead by one. Targeting Katakurt again, high ball behind. There's the throw. Lefty goes down the middle. Katakurt cross, is it in? No sir, out of bounds, so Greece. Find themselves in a good spot. She's doing her best to get past the block. Coach Ochal just making sure there's no ball mark in the sand before we move on. Well, Greece know they have to be aggressive and serve. That's what Turkey are known for, their aggressive serving. They've been making errors, but Greece, as we saw from that statistic, they have to find a way to make it difficult for the setter to run her offense. And the only way to do that is to be aggressive from the end line, try to force the receivers into difficult positions. Here comes Antuli. Three service errors in a row. Now for a casual advert, a, a, Observer is the word I'm looking for. For a casual observer, seeing all those missed serves, you might think, come on, you train that all day, every day. But it really is a matter of, at this high level, finding a way to be aggressive. It's not just putting lollipop serves over. You have to take more risk. Well, a lot of risk. Olga Strantali took with her life to get in the way of Handabala didn't swing. And another ace serve comes down the pipeline. Katakurt looks like she's going one way, changes at the last minute. Really targeting Strantali in the reception.
Goes for it again. Same spot. Good reactions out of Greece. They get themselves a freebie. Sranzali responds. Olga Sranzali was the best outside hitter in the Romanian league in 2022. She also played over there in Cuneo, Italy. If you want to have a check out her life and what it looks like to be a professional volleyball player, we did a YouTube video together on the volley bubble there for your viewing pleasure. Great tip. Baladin finding her rhythm here in the third. She's been a little hot and cold throughout the match. But you give her that fast ball to the outside. The blockers don't have time. And then that time goes down the line. Again, there's a lot of space between the blockers on Greece's side. Yeah. Still hasn't got control of their errors. Short ball. Nailed in. Dialed in. Absolute money from Shimge Akos. Oh, she was the best libero at the Euro Champs 2019. Have a look at that ball. Perfectly on the head of her setter. She can run that quick ball behind to Ada Erdem Dundara. Played against to add them back in my day, and she is so tough to read. Turkey climbing closer to the end of this mountain, the top of the mountain. Seven is Greece. Turkey at nine. They only need one more set to get things done here and remain undefeated. A bit of luck. The opposite, Vargas going heavy. Ball going almost out, but a touch by Antulia. She tries to get out of the way, not much she could do. That ball spinning, dipping. You have some major dodgeball skills, matrix style to get away from it. Ten to seven, and Vargas continues at the line. Vargas gets Reese off the bat. Good push to the outside and a, just the slightest of space for Nicolo Gianni to find her way through. Baladin. And the roundhouse. Has so much space there with only one blocker up. in at 11 to 8. Again targeting Stronzali. Tip goes over. Vargas on the floor. Has to go high to the outside. Blockers know it, but it's free ball instead. Chance for Greece to do something. Off the hands, and they do. And that's important for Greece at this level. When they do get an opportunity, they need to grab it with both hands. And a free ball is exactly that. It's a good push from Konstantinoudou, the lefty setter, to find her opposite spot. Karakurt, what an angle, what a shot. Karakurt was the best opposite of the VNL in 2019. She's working her way up to be one of the best outside hitters in this European competition. Better serve out of Dundar. Good action. 
There's the pipe targeting the middle blocker who's just served. That's always a great strategy. We love our middle blockers, but we are certainly not known for our defensive prowess. 10 to 12. Baladin. Quick to the middle. Good recycle play. Out of court goes off the hands. My ball. Gonsali throws to Vargas, who's on the floor, and that's the way Greece have to continue their play. Finding tiny little cracks in this Turkish armor, one of them being target the middle in the reception, another one being get Vargas on the floor. There are little ways that Turkey can find themselves in difficulty, and it's just about Greece looking for those little moments. Another good ball in by Baladin. Vargas goes for a big swing, coming back over. Katakurt, tip. Oh, and the scramble play. Katakurt still finding a way, even in a difficult situation. She's got one blocker up. You've got to appreciate that Tsitsi Gianni comes down off the block, trying to help her team out. 22-year-old opposite. She'll now have a swing. She goes off the hands. Ball behind to Vargas, who is blocked. A monster block out of Lampruzzi and Stranzali. Lampruzzi taking one step. She's a little bit on the late side, but does exactly what she needs to do, which is go over low and tight where she lands. The 29-year-old middle blocker played in Malouz in Romania and now Olympiakos in Greece. Katakurt, OT. The Black Wolf strikes again. Absolutely so much line for her to take. Think about all these Turkish players that we talked about this earlier on. Our coach Ochal is trying to find ways to slow them down, but the block makes a decision one way, the attacker's going to go the other. I try catch. Typically wearing the libero jersey, now wearing the serving jersey, if there were such a thing. Been twice now, just for a serving sub. Sali. Best server of the Euro Champs qualification 2019. Doesn't get Turkish side off their mark. And instead it's Vargas who continues to put points on the board. Vargas has 14 points in attack, 16 in total, including those two aces she's got for her team. Goes for an ace, and she will get it. Fenerbahce Finam. Tags the end line between two players. With the players kind of just watching it, not really moving with their body. That's the difference that I'm seeing from the Turkish receivers and the Greek. Is that when a tough serve comes your way, you've got to follow it with your entire body, not just with your eyes. It's 17 13. Nicolo Gianni asks her coach if there might be a touch. Yes, there is. Point goes directly to Greece. 17 to 13. Two liberos on the court, one of them aced. Greece. Georgia Lampruzzi, the MVP of the Greek Cup in 2016 and the Challenge Cup winner of 2018. Goes aggressive and finds the floor. And effectively, there are two liberos on court. She targets Baladin this time. 
Break through the middle. And a monster swing for Turkey. Turkish fans are ready to take some shots, apparently, according to the DJ here in Dusseldorf. There's the big swing. 89 kilometers an hour, but Greece somehow handles it and responds with a middle attack out of Kanadatse. That's important to keep that firing. You can't just rely on the heavy swingers on the wings. They've got to keep getting the middle blockers involved. There's Gunesh on the sidelines, one of Turkey's most famous middle blockers. Off the hands. High ball behind. Cross court is dug. There goes the outside. Again, it's another tip. Well read by Greece. Chance to swing. Just long. Was there a touch? Gauthier says no. Greece says yes. Touch on the left hand of Handa Baladin. So that is the correct challenge. Point for coach Ines Ochal. He was previously the assistant coach at Turkavayolari and Azadjabashi over in Turkey. Eda Erdem Dundar. Goes ripping cross court, and we love to see Turkey getting the middles back into the game. That fast push back, it's basically a one on one. Dunda high, wide, and strong. And the Baladin. Side, off hands or no? We might have another challenge here. The question is, did this touch the hands? Oop, I don't think so. Might have been a little bit quick to respond. Oh, net touch is what we're going for. Interesting, all right. Very close to getting themselves a win in this set. Ooh, close? I don't think so. So followed up with a timeout with a two-point deficit. Greek team underneath Turkey. more frontal tension. You have to continue to take this line, let's say, between. Uh, Cole Sette, she's front, right? You are front, right? No. I don't know whether she's... Yeah. Okay, perfect. Be ready for this condition, and you can play for her too. There is no problem. She's fast. You can play, no problem. But I saw that they are opening on the court. They are not same middle on the court. So you can, if the ball is your own hands, you can play. Okay. Okay. Well, a little bit more excitement in Coach Ochal's voice here in this third set. I think he can sense the closeness, the opportunity, the possibility for Greece to take this set off of Turkey. They're going to have to do it now. Baladin at the end line at 19-17. Another point in the pocket for the team in white. Baladin has struggled at the service line all match long at seven errors for her not all of them from the end line she's been given a few points over to the other team 18 19. 
And an ace serve. Greece with an ace serve on the floor directly in front of two players, Kimge and Karakurt. Not even making a move. So a 19-19 timeout. I have to pass, I pass this fucking ball. I have to set, I set, attack strong. Stop to go 50% of your possibility. Go, die, come on. I think one of the frustrations of having one of these high level teams is that Sometimes you might slip into the mindset of, oh, we've got this in the bag, we don't have to try, we're meant to be better, on paper we're better. But the problem with that is the other team's out to get you. So if you get caught sleeping, that's when opportunities can creep in for your opponents. Another scramble play for Turki Vargas off the hands, kept alive by Greece. Chance on the outside. That's Doug again, another good pickup. And eventually the ball lands on Turkey's side. And a little bit of chitter chatter begins as Greece take the lead 20 to 19. And there's the tip throw. I think that was clean. That ball was just up on the net. Another strong serve, this time to Baladin on the other side. Cross court, Karakurt. She goes sharp past Ratsali. She's doing really well to get those angles. 20 points apiece. Ratsali handles that serve. Ratsuli. Goes off the blockers. Katakurt, another chance. She's dug. Great scramble play. Has to be a freebie. Turkia. Pick it up. Ball behind to Vargas. That's a tip. And there it falls. And right into the honeypot goes Vargas. Vargas has been a huge contributor in the points for Turkia, even with those cheeky little tips. He sees all the players of Greece on the heels. But Sally, good ball in through the middle. Handled by Ede Ergandundar, the block. Covered by Vargas, again goes Karakurt, stays in play on Turkia's side, it's Scramble City. Eventually a free ball has to be handled, setters out, Dundar to Vargas, another block. Another opportunity, and it's Turkiye to put the stamp on that point. Well, the opportunities were there for Greece. As they did a really good job to make things difficult for Turkiye, defending, scrapping, pushing the ball back, but eventually Karakurt does a good job of not finding a situation. You cannot attack from direction by five. We have to change something, okay? We have to change every time you're on direction. They are smart guys. They are high level. You cannot go five five. You have to look five go one. You have to look one go five, okay? I just answered by for this ball. But under all conditions is good. Let's go to you to five. One ball, pass, bomba, high. Well, it's coming down to the wire here in the third set. Greece putting up an awesome fight here to keep themselves involved in set number three. But Turkey have a two-point advantage again. Grantali. Well, that's what Greece needed. Clever swing into the block and out of bounds. Targeting the left and the right arm of the blocker on the right side. Oh. 
Arkut targeted, bump set, overpass, and Greece get themselves back in position to take the set. And I have to say, targeting Karakurt, I've said it all match long, and I'm surprised it hasn't been the strategy of Greece. Now they're looking for her, getting a bump set. And the block, just wide, but in a good position. Well, Greece might be having a challenge here for in out. Well, whether or not they actually think the ball was out or in, at least this is a chance to slow down the momentum. Let's have a look. Oh, that ball's in, that ball's in. Yes, sir, successful challenge for Greece. Well, what seems to be working is Greece putting up a fight, 23-22. This serve's got to go to Kautakurt again. Instead, to again, let off the hook. Deep serve. Priest bringing it back in. Free ball has to go. Situation handled easily. Ball behind to Vargas, looking for the line, and she gets it. Vargas with so much power. She goes all the way outside the antenna, gets that approach. Giving herself a huge window to work with. 24-23, Turkey at match point. And they close it out here, Stransali. Says, not yet with the front slide. And the lefty going off one leg. Finds herself with enough width to do some damage there. The attack back to 24s. Greece drops it on Baladin. Outside to Karakurt. And she goes wide. A point goes to Greece. Now Greece in the driver's seat. Out of court, over the top of the blockers, but just out of bounds. Anticipate this ball is low. They serve Sean Ebra. You take the ball in this way, base one, and the ball go on Miller. Okay, Ebra, without extra rotation, you go over the blocker. Okay, dive here. Well, the match just got interesting. We get to hear into both those timeouts in English. You get an idea of what the coaches are asking of their players. Greece has to be on the lookout for a tip now that's been falling well. Observe on Baladin. Vargas does not tip. She rips. Vargas continues to be a top scoring, top performing athlete for Turkey. As the fans having a great time in the stadium. Great to see it here in Dusseldorf, Germany. Sally handles the reception. And the swing goes just long. And another challenge coming our went our ways. Have a look. Oh, that's in. That is in. Greece. Fight on here in the third set. Back to set point. 
As a reminder, Greece are sitting in fifth position in the pool. They must get a win here today to have a chance of making it to the next round. And in order to do so, they've got to take this set. Vargas is making it really, really tough on them. Full rotation inside the block. And we're back to 26s. Kalach. Again to Stavansali. Big swing, but it's just long. And that puts Turkey back in the driver's seat. Well, we're looking for block touch. I think I saw Stransali mentioning she was asking maybe for foot over the line instead of a block touch. Might this be a wasted challenge? Oh, it's so close. So close. But no touch. So Turkey, I keep the point. Match and set points for Turkey. 27 26. Simple serve. Ball to the outside, into the hands, and the block sends it packing. Hey, they air them. And Melissa Vargas finish things off for Turkey with a big staff block. Well, Greece can hold their heads up high. They fought. Tooth and nail for that last set. They did not make it easy for Turkey, but Turkey with some of the best powerhouse hitters in the game and one of the winningest coaches in recent years remain undefeated here in Pool C in Germany. They've only dropped one set, and despite Greece putting a lot of pressure on them there in the third. Still only have one set lost in this CDB Eurovolley competition for 2023. They keep their place at the top of the pool. And Greece now are officially out of the competition, sitting in fifth place with no more chances. There you go, there's a confirmation of the scores. 26-24 was the first, and then a pretty rough and aggressive second set, finishing 25-16, but 28-26 is quite a fight in the third. There's an overall look at the stats. Seven blocks for Turkey, five for Greece. Six aces apiece, but look at those errors right there underneath. Underneath Greece, that 26, that number, er the errors that Turkey committed. Greece only committing 16, so that's where the chances were in the first set, but Greece, they put up a fight. Here's a look at the majority of the attacks for Greece. Down the line is the red. Cross court is Greece. Good spread across the court. Majority of the attacks coming from the left side. That was Transali doing the majority of that. And Tuli behind. And Greece trying to get their middle running as the match progressed, but they weren't able to use them as much as they would have liked. Turkey, pretty much the same story. A lot of right side and outside hitting. Not so much through the middle except those tight swings there. Let's have a listen in. I think it's the libero. We're going to get a chat too. Shinga echoes. A big win for, a big win for your team. <laughs> cannot hear you. <laughs> Maybe we need time a little bit, huh? Just what can I say? It was a really tough game, actually. They played really good. I really congratulate to them. Uh, they fought really, really well, but we are happy to win this game. Uh, thank you for our supporters. Thank you for everyone. It was
was tough playing against Greece. Did you expect that it can be so tough because the end of the first set and the third uh, were Actually, very... we are making really uh, too many rotations in the team and every day is different players playing. Uh, with this uh, effort, I think we did a good job. Uh, they play also uh, really good. That's it. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Well, lovely to hear there from the libero. Best digger of the club world champs in 2020. And she has been a crucial part of this Turkish squad. But like she mentioned, Turkey has such a depth on their team that they're able to really switch things up and anyone can play at any time. They have four matches played, four wins, and they remain at the top of the table. And a very likelihood that they will remain there and move on. to Turkey. They'll face Germany tomorrow, sitting second in the pool with two wins and two losses. Winner of that match will take the top spot and face off against the fourth place finisher in Pool A on Monday. So I'll be sure to tune in to all your favorite European teams battling it out over the next few weeks to see who will make the CEV Eurovolley finals in Belgium on September 1st and 3rd. But for now, from all of us,